Welcome back to the channel where in this episode we go dinosaur hunting in Ireland. We visit two forts next to each other and one castle where we also try to get pictures of a partial eclipse. But do we succeed? If you enjoy our channel please subscribe as it really helps the channel grow. So please give us a like and a comment as we really love to hear from you. Welcome to Getaway Geese. We are Stu and Jane and with Harry, our Ford Custom Auto Camper, we share our adventures. So join us in this RF Guide series to campervanning in Ireland. Now we left you in the last episode waking up to an isolated park up on Valentia Island. I've got a bit of an exciting day for today today, Jane. We've got two things we're going to do. I'm going to make a smile today. We're going on a dinosaur hunt number one. That's very exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> And then number two is she's going to be really excited because we're going to go to the waste place where we throw rubbish. I am actually excited <laughs> about that. The problem is when you're in a remote location is that sometimes you're like, your mind sort of wanders a little bit. So if you heard footsteps, like literally my heart would just stop. And the wind and never to beat like... again. And when we were at the pier the other day, I thought I heard something. And then I went to open one of the curtains and it just suddenly went through my mind. What would you do if you saw a face the other side looking in? We keep thinking we're going to have to push ourselves to stay on a high street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pretty good at wild camping out in the middle of In the way. wild. Um, Free we're camping. pretty good at camping where we know like an air or so, that type of stuff. But we're probably not so good at the old stealth park and that's my I tend to gravitate to those easier places I suppose. A short drive and we arrive at the northwest end of the island. Can you look a bit excited? <laughs> yeah. I could try. Come on, come on. This is what happens when you live with a what a person. <laughs> Gotta see the dinosaur. Tetrapod. The animal, lizard like in appearance, was one meter long. So here's the tetrapod prince. So the site should show us evidence of footprints from the tetrapod, as well as its tail dragging on the mud at the time. The tracks were only actually discovered in 1992. So millions of years ago, this wasn't here. This was down at the equator, this whole land. This is the earth shifting round until it formed island. Okay, it's there somewhere. And so at first we struggle to see it. I need to go back and read it now. Ah, oh, there's some imprints there. But then you get your eye on it. So there, so there you can see the trackway going that way. That's his footsteps as he crawled himself up. And soon it becomes obvious. Jane will zoom in. There's pot, um, little footprints going that way. And then they go across there. So that's the trackway of the tetrapod. And I have to say that Stu especially got more excited in identifying and the more we filmed it, the more we saw it. And on the way back, we go to the information board just to reconfirm what we saw. Are you excited? <laughs> okay. So as you can see, I completely failed to get Jane excited about that. I thought it was really interesting. Can't believe how this earth formed itself and shaped itself millions of years ago. And we've ended up here. And I guess it's still shifting. But it must have been quite traumatic at the times of movement. So what we saw was his footprints. And the, there was a tra tail drag. You can see the tail drag. I have to have another look. So he'd have moved himself up and then obviously dragging the... the, the uh, 
It's one of those autumn days. It's like spring. I love those days where there's a bit of sun. There's a chill in the air, but I don't know, the light is just perfect, I find. And the colours we're starting to see, especially on this peninsula, we've seen it more with the gold and amber colours against really lush green grass. And when the sun comes out, it just transforms the whole scene. That's what we found. I've been really lucky with the weather. I know it's times it's absolutely thrown it down, but it's, you know, it's the end of October. She's still down there in awe of what she's looking at. Stu's already back at the bloody camper van. And I'm just about to go and read more about it. It shall drive him nuts. I like the hair and the tortoise. Well, no, actually, I just go the speed most people go. Stu just goes like Billy Bloody Whiz. Normally, I don't like bugs, but he's so small. He's actually quite cute. Come on, then. Did you enjoy that? I enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that. That was quite good. Yes, it was. Very it's a good. beautiful morning. Yeah, every time it keeps saying it's going to rain, we're getting days like this. I mean, I'm in a T-shirt. So we're now going to talk uh, about rubbish. That's going to be the topic. Um, we've sort of mentioned it all the way through the trip, but we feel as now now's the time to sum it up. Because um, this is a challenge when you're travelling, and that's because they do things differently to how we do in the UK, that's for certain. In as much as they don't, they have to pay for uh, their rubbish to be removed. And it's a very tidy place, I have to say, it isn't is it? It is spotless, yeah. honestly. Um, whereas we've got rubbish bins all over the place, sometimes spilling over in the UK. Here, they don't. Now, there's a downside to it, as much as if you're traveling, it is quite hard to get rid of rubbish. You know, they do have litter bins, and I think this is the other thing we found. We didn't know this early on. No, we didn't. We thought so if you're thinking of arresting us, if you're on yeah. some sort of CCTV, <laughs> we didn't realize, honestly. Uh, in the UK, you know, a bin's a bin, we put, bin of rub rubbish litter now there's a difference between litter it's not household waste so they don't like you doing that now you, you're gonna have to make your own decision on this obviously if you're gonna put it away it needs to be very small amounts it's no use standing in a bin with a great big bin and trying to feed it through like a snake that ain't gonna work and actually you'll probably get a find or b somebody's gonna say something to you um so it, you know you're gonna get rid of litter if you want to get rid of waste uh, as in general waste it becomes more difficult, we found, isn't it, as we come across mm, the peninsulas. Really there's there's less litter bins yeah. to start off with. Yeah. So we've used um, waste disposal sites. Um, we're going to one today. Um, basically, you can pay to take a per bag. You know, and we have been <laughs> separating um, wet waste and dry waste because it's easier. I think the the other thing that's a ch uh, that, that's there, there's lots of recycling places, but it's bottles, cans, and food cans, etc. So that's okay. What there isn't mm. is a plastic. If there's plastic bottles, because obviously you buy lots of water, and plastic bottles is also a problem. Um, so that for us, unfortunately, whether that's right or wrong, is going in general mm. waste. Um, I think if they had a plastic, uh, there would be help dry plastics because uh, it's, it's a shame they're missing that. Yeah, it's a shame that they haven't got more dumping places, really. You know, there's, there's, there's few and far between of waste disposal places. Lots of recycling places, very few waste disposal places. We have seen, because there's private companies who obviously collect waste, we have seen the big yellow... Um, and we did. We thought at first we're, we're not like, we're, we're, we're people pay to get rid of like their rubbish. rubbish yeah, and actually, we're like, we need um, one now. I, I, it's the bin. Um, there's a bin company basically called, and it's yellow bins. But they 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 are not all over. They're certainly not on the peninsulas. So they're, they're in certain places they've got them. And I sort of get them now, to be honest, yeah. if we saw one, we'd be using it. <laughs> and yeah, there's no two ways about it. We'd definitely. be using it. I think you can get a card. You might be able to pay online and just yeah. use it. The, um, place, so, the place is so much yeah. tidier than the UK. Yeah. and um, So you definitely respect it. Um, you know, we've got to learn to li the difference between litter and general bins. We apologise if we've done it wrong. Anyway, on to the next excitement, Jane. Waste Within. disposal. Yeah. We then move on to Carhas Savine, where the waste facility is. Stop 
number one. This is for recycling, so we've only got a few bottles and cans to go here. That's, uh, that's all we've got, really. So we had a trip to Aldi, and Jane bought us a treat, a bit of a sugar, two fruits of the day, raspberry and apple. There you go. I'm sure it's not good for you. But Stu disappoints me. So unfortunately, we've just driven all that way and it's shut. Um, I didn't think it was even, it didn't look as if it was even open at all. But Stu's seen a sign that says it's closed on Monday. So we've got this bloody great big bag of rubbish. I just assumed it was open on a Monday and a working week. Yeah, you would. That's fair enough. I didn't look any further than so, that because I just assumed wrongly. Yeah. Never assume. Never assume. I can come back tomorrow. She's going to just hold on to the bag of rubbish for the night. It's getting that bed, that bed. Get asleep and a skip tonight. Yeah, yeah. So Stu tries to recover the situation and he finds a couple of forts to visit. So we head back through Car has Savine. Stu's in annoying mode today. Because he hasn't got out of the van and I think the pressure's getting to him. He needs to get some, get some bloody fresh air. He needs to be bloody exercised. <laughs> <laughs> Now, unfortunately, rain delays the fort. So we go on to a local beach for lunch, where we were entertained by birds enjoying surfing the breeze. So we're going back now to the fort because the weather's cleared a bit. So. Fort. See what I'm kind of cooped up in this van with him, like this. <laughs> He's like a bloody bottle of pop. And whilst they're right next to each other, they're centuries apart in their historical timeline. That's the other fort over there, which we'll go and see in a bit. The castle in the distance. Hopefully going to park up there tonight. So I presume that's pronounced Lake and Buell Stone Fort. It was built in the 9th or 10th century and was the protected farmstead of a wealthy landowner. So there's the plan. There's obviously internal walls on this one. There's two, three, four houses by the looks of it would have been here. And there was an inside chamber on that one. It's got three metre thick walls. Inside there's the remainder of a roundhouse and an underground passage apparently. Excavations inside the fort have produced iron knives and the whetstones with which they would have sharpened pins and bone hair combs and millstones for grinding wheat or barley into flour. There's the inside hidden chamber. So the stone forts, which are, there's a lot found mainly in the west of Ireland and apparently they're really difficult to date. Um, some are thought to be an Iron Age from 500 BC through to 400 AD time um, and many were very simple stone versions of ring forts. This is the design of the other one we went to, except it's got a central roundhouse. It's similar to that one just outside Schneem. The intricate work on the stone is how it all interconnects to make it strong. This one you can get loads high, it's got a higher back wall, this one has. Wow! And in the centre of this one, there's remains of a circular dry stone building. That's obviously where probably the most important person who ever was lived there. 
It's a really impressive structure. You get a real sense of this one. It's slightly different to the one outside Schneem is this there's this back higher wall. Whether the other one had it, I don't know. Some less coins for good luck. See Jane there. It just shows how big that back wall is. So you can probably just make out where I suggest the reconstruction occurred. At the top there, you can see the older stones below, and then there's a line of more cleaner, less aged stones at the top. <laughs> We've been a bit blown around. Stu's had his walk, so it's a bit calmer. Yeah, it's nice in the sun though. It is really nice, yeah. Just got to dodge so... the rain spots. Showers, but the shy. Oh we oh my goodness, don't look, don't look. <gasps> it's okay. <laughs> There's a bit of a drop to the side. Hey. Okay. Well Laurie. Um yeah, so Stu just needs feeding and watering now. <laughs> Valley Carberry Castle is our park up for the night. Now unfortunately you can't get close to it but it does provide a great backdrop. Before the ruins that we see today there was earlier residence recorded on the site as early as 1398. Here's our pet bin bag that we've become quite attached to. So, success today, we went dinosaur hunting, we failed on the waste management premises, but you got two forts and a castle. Oh, exactly. And a beach. And a beach. So. From a distance, from yeah. From a distance, I did. Yeah. It wasn't the best beach, but it was all right. So that's, I'd say that's a win. And you went to Aldi. And I went to Aldi, um, so. Does and this... you also lost your. I think I've lost my favourite selfie stick. I think it must have fallen out the door. Not overly impressed with me tonight because as lovely as they look, they're turkey sausages. So Stu isn't convinced this is going to be nice. edible, <laughs> even with his magic uh, herbs. It might be nice. It might be the way forward in life. This dinner is going to end badly because also I bought, we did try, you'll see in a previous video that we bought processed peas and they were absolutely <coughs> awful. <laughs> Apparently it's what you use for mushy peas, but we didn't know that. So now I've tried, I've bought petit pois. It's green gum. And to be honest, let's have a look. Mm. They look equally as unappetising. <laughs> oh, they look all right. Yeah, but they're looking like sausages and therefore they won't be the greatest sausage in the world. You never know, you might get this surprised. This is where food, trying to be something else, is not good. If it's a turkey, it's a turkey. It's so how would you have it then? As a turkey. <laughs> now I put stuff on here to try and make it better. So if it tastes alright, it's because it's down to me. Hmm? Alright. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. It's only because I put stuff on it. Yeah, but if you, if you didn't have that. It would be no good. <laughs> so that's our view tonight. Another great park up overlooking the water. It was high tide and the tide's gone back out really quickly. So they're off. Low tide, perhaps they're taking mussels, um, nets, I don't know, or something. And this old bay is virtually emptied apart from the centre river there. Well, there's two of them, there's another one. Yeah, that looks like they're some sort of nets or boxes 
maybe they go picking there's two or three of them on the back there they go and picking clam shells mussels or something farming it And in 1652, the castle was attacked by cannon fire from the UK Parliament forces as part of the War of the Three Kingdoms. And you can still see the arrow slit windows. In the 18th century, a house was built on the site using some of the walls, but it was demolished in the 20th century. to be able to walk up to the castle but fortunately in 2017 the landowner stopped access. You can just see the two tractors working in the bay at low tide. <coughs> There's meant to be an eclipse today. Yes, uh, well partial eclipse apparently partial. between uh, just after 10 o'clock and 11.06 or something. It's the best time in Ireland to see it, if there's clear skies. But I'll be honest with you, right now, unless there's some miraculous change in the uh, weather, it's um, there's just cloud cover at the moment, so I can't see it. But you never know. In Ireland, I have to say one minute, it's yeah, cloudy, it definitely. and the next minute, it's clear blue skies. <laughs> if so. I thought it was like that in the Never UK. say never in Ireland, especially on the West Coast, because obviously the you know, the wind's coming in from the uh, Atlantic, and yeah. it's, uh, it just, just changes. <laughs> That's one thing you need to be ready for. Well, I bought these poached egg bags to try, as hopefully it will help us avoid the mess in the saucepan. Okay. So first of all, we put the egg into, into there. Good shot. Just, just put the egg in there. And then it says, grasp it by that, and then it says drop. Gently place, not drop. Oh um, God, is it sealed up? Oh, we haven't got enough water in there. Anger. Oh God. I don't know what to do it. It's an interesting concept, that's one. It's because we haven't got enough water. Okay. Number two. It's a culinary first. And so we don't bring you groundbreaking technology. These have probably been on the market um, for about 20 years. In it goes. And that will just come to the boil, up back to the boil. And that's four, was it? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes are going to do. I can still see some white bits on the outside. How did that get there? I don't know. That's our lid to the jug. We keep meaning to buy, I know you can buy lids. We need to get one. Um, but I just we keep the, forgetting. I shove the kettle every now and again, we have a disaster and, and the whole thing moves. Bit number one out. Then you put it on a kitchen, bit of kitchen paper and a bit of kitchen roll to dry it. If it just falls out, it's ready. Give it a shake. And voila, it's poached egg. Okay, they look good. Can I have some pepper, please? Uh, Oh, yeah, it's probably slightly, uh, could have been a bit slightly under, but they're definitely poached. That's all right. Yeah, they're good. Are they worth £1.50 for 10 I think there's an easier way of doing that. There must be, you could buy some plastic, oh, um, God, permanent go. plastic ones that you used to get poaches in, there, like a saucepan. I know you can get a poacher oh, okay. saucepan, but you should, you should be able to get a, 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 a sealed thing where you put the egg in and then drop that in. I reckon it'll be the same thing. Then I'm going to leave it to be fair, they, they're quite near perfect. Mm -hmm. The tractors are coming back, done their work out in the estuary part. Well, they've emptied the crates off. I'm assuming for the mussels or something. Well, it's supposed to be time for the eclipse, which I'm sure is happening, or partial eclipse. But we ain't gonna see it. It's starting to rain, there's low cloud, unfortunately. Well, it's just brightened up a bit. I just wonder whether we might just see a breakthrough of the sun. The clouds are coming that way and it's a bit brighter over, over there, so who knows? If that cloud can just move, we might see it. 
<laughs> it's gone back in again. You can just see the sun. If that low cloud would just blow away, it's going to be tantalising and tormenting me. I think the cloud's going to unfortunately be in the way. Well, it's 10.40. I think 10.52 was the optimum time. The clouds are moving so fast you just might get a glimpse of it. <laughs> I can just see some blue sky behind there. It's this bloody low cloud. <laughs> it's so close. <laughs> oh, I just need a break in the cloud. There it is, poking. You can see there's a blue sky pokes through every now and again. Yeah, it's the upper left hand um, quadrant that's oh, got man. the yeah. out of it. Well, that wasn't a great success, and we concluded that to take an eclipse shot, you need the right camera, the right cameraman, and a bit of luck. But at least you tried. Well, we'll leave this video here, and we'll see you in the next video. So, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, then help us grow the channel by subscribing, liking, and commenting. And we'll hopefully see you in the next episode of Our Travels in Harry.